What is up? Hey, Dave. Dude, what's up? How's your tum-tum feeling after that big Thanksgiving Day feast? Oh, wow. My tum-tum? It's been in a better place before, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> I'm just joking, dude. We didn't eat Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> no, I did. Oh, did you? I went to Cracker Barrel. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I had an indoor Thanksgiving with all my closest enemies. <laughs> uh, with Cracker Barrel food? Yes. My, uh, I think we talked about this earlier this week, but I was talking to a client who said, <laughs> Cracker Barrel tastes like all lives matter. <laughs> Oh, for sure, dude. He was it, like, dude, it's the whitest food on the fucking planet. Oh, for well, I don't know. Bob Evans might be whiter. Bob yeah. Evans is crazy, dude. But dude, it's the blandest food I've ever tried in my life. Yeah, it's tough. They don't know how they they didn't invent salt at fucking Cracker Barrel. Definitely not. Um, but they they keep I keep seeing ads where they're like Come in for curbside dining <laughs> in delivery for Thanksgiving. Oh We're my god! It's chicken fried turkey, and I was like, "Gee, can you imagine in the year 2020 <laughs> we have 9,000 cases in Ohio a day, and saying, hey, everyone I love the most, let's go to Cracker Barrel and eat.'" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yo, yo, let's eat shitty Cracker Barrel together in a pandemic and buy fucking Phil Robinson t-shirts from Duck Dynasty in the lobby. Just in case you weren't sure if I wanted you to die, I definitely do. And that's why we're doing this. But it'll be fine with the fucking ulcer you got. Like, Cracker (laughs) Barrel's easy on the ulcer, hard on the pandemic. (laughs) Easy on the ulcer. Oh, uh, fuck, dude. Hey, this is Toma Chaos, and we're trying to crowdsource a religion, if you didn't tell by that fucking monologue. Dialogue? Dialogue we just went on. It's, it's obvious from yeah. what we just said. For that, sure. Uh, and we're in the studio again, out of the studio because of COVID. I'm in the studio. Walter's in his studio at home. With his wife, Teak, again, two weeks in a row. Hello. We're pumped about this. This is, this is Teak Uncut. This is what you get when you're quarantined in your house, pretty much. You know, you just <laughs> hear a bunch of me. I'm just going to be excited. I'll just come on. Like, Teak is always, <laughs> Teak's always on the tone. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. Um, how, how are you two doing? Tell me about I'm life. Well, I recently got some wireless earbuds, so I'm very uh, heavy into listening to podcasts right now. Oh, I'm very yeah. excited about that because I used to just not be able to do that as much. And so now I'm just like in it. Are they the buds separate? Yeah, because with having a five-year-old who can't read or write being in school all day and you have to log them on and off a computer all day, you can't do anything else. Yeah. So now that I have these Wi-Fi earbuds, I can listen to things all day. You do the thing that every self-respecting good parent does, and you put one earbud in one ear with a podcast (laughs) or something to keep you sane with another ear just in case, you know, they fall down the stairs. (laughs) Exactly what happened. (laughs) Fuck yeah, dude. That's my play on the daily right now. That's my new thing, and I'm like, how did I not know every parent needs to know about this? <laughs> what podcast are you listening to? Um, right now, I've I've been trying to get into how did this get made, which is working. Um, I think I went through in October. We spent way too much time watching thrillers and like spookies, and mm-hmm. then I was like, let me do a deep dive into real depressing podcasts. Yeah, and I was really upset for like a week and a half. And I was like, I bet this is why, like being married to Walter, who isn't like impenetrable to things yeah. in a place, I'd be like, he's doing fine. I can do fine. And I'm like, no, you're actually a lot more in tune emotionally Dude. to the things and sensitive. 
So that's it was, that's it how needed. Sarah is. We can watch a sad movie and Sarah will get three quarters of the way through oh, no. and she's like, this is too real. You ever talked to her about when we watched The Blind Side? Oh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I want to know. It's like a really great. It's just great. Yeah, just I'll have to talk to her about it. I I love it about her, but it's like if it's too deep or like I I've tried watching Breaking Bad through mm-hmm. again, you know, since we've been married probably four times and there's every there's like one episode that mm-hmm. Sarah will see at some point and be like, we can't watch this anymore. It's yeah. just, it's so real. Like it's so deep. Yeah. It gets me into a place where I don't want to be. And I'm just like, come on, it's not that bad. Like uh-huh. let's dive in. Let's see all the fucked up shit. Dude, what are we talking about today? Um, well, I think because it's a Thanksgiving week, we're going to take it easy and not try too hard and just talk a little, uh, TV. I'm really nervous. Now that you said, take it easy, not try too hard. Now it's like, oh my God, I'm going to, I'm going to fuck this up. Oh, Teek's like, I'm already trying real <laughs> hard. You try as hard as you want, baby. Oh, we're separate. Oh, I'm going to try. We're separate individuals. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to try. Not too hard. <laughs> this is when this is the guest that changes the show. Like people are like, they need teak. Like th- uh, there's form, there's function. Like Dave goes on way less tangents now that teak's on the show. Like yeah, I take some of that on. Yeah, well, I'm about it. <laughs> Fucking paint me a paint me a word picture, teak. A word picture. Yeah, about this fucking. What are we talking about? I think that's on I'm, Walter. So I think we're going to talk about this um, documentary series called The Vow on HBO. Spoilers about <laughs> the spoiler is that it's on HBO. Yeah. Other spoilers might include what everything the show's we're about. about to say. Um, but I mean, it's a documentary. So if you think a document, like it's real life, like I don't really spoil it. I don't know. I guess you can spoil real life. Yeah. But every documentary has got that twist at the end now. It's a, Uh, but if you're like watching the news, then there is a twist because you know what happened. Yeah, for sure. I feel you. I had only heard. So it's about a cult named Nexium. And I had heard about it when it was all kind of crumbling a couple of years ago. Me and a couple other people were like, hey, have you heard about this thing? And we hadn't until then. And then it was like kind of poof. OK, then it was gone. So when the series came out, I recalled that and I know kind of how it ends, obviously. So yeah. you can't really spoil it. It's just more about details, I think. For and- sure. You definitely, I mean, if you're like me, when you watch stuff, you get honed in on like the characters who are actually real people in this. Are you, are you a Googler while you watch things? I try not to be. See, I Um, do. Like if I'm watching shit like that, I start knowing everything that happened to the people after, you know, like I just got to know shit. Like I I do it with shows all the time where it's just like a a movie of whatever. I'm just like, I wonder what this actor's doing now. And I, like, have to know. If I can't let go of something, I definitely will look it up. Knowing, like, I'm a, I'm choosing this and I'm a victim of my own choice. <laughs> yeah. If I ruin something or, like, find out something I don't want to yeah, know. Yeah, for sure. I'm like, oh, you did it to yourself. Yeah. You made it. it. So, <laughs> Fuck yeah. I'm, I am so strict with myself about, like, what I'm allowed to do while I'm watching a show. To the point where I've started turning off subtitles i know this is gonna sound insane i've noticed that you've been doing that and i don't want to say that it hurts me but it does you've been turning off subtitles yes ever since we had kids we've been like subtitle team i only watch things with subtitles yeah it ruins the experience of watching the movie yeah because you just start reading yes Yes. and i think i do that too but I'm so used to it that it's what I like to do now. But it breaks comedy. It, comedy yeah. doesn't work in subtitles. Yeah. No, it doesn't. I'm sure. It, but that's the other thing, though, is with comedy, you can afford to miss things as well. Right. Like you don't but have to catch every Robert, single detail. 
But even drama is like I'll find myself too focused on reading words to even take in like how beautiful a shot is. Like we were watching Mr. Robot the uh-huh. other night and I was like, if I was just reading what people were saying, I wouldn't see mm. how well this is framed. I wouldn't yeah. see like choices they're making in the shot. And you know what I was thinking? Where are my subtitles? <laughs> Dude. <laughs> I'm a subtitle person because I like I will go back to hear like every little word like but I'm more of a dialogue. I like the dialogue and shit. Then watch it twice. Here's yeah. what I'm telling you. You're only hurting yourself the same way that you are when you Google like what's happening in this show and then you accidentally find out what happens later. In the I, show. That never really happens though. Oh, that happens to Tico all the time. Yeah, I don't do that shit. I, I like, want to know about the actors. I want to know about, like, shit like that. But I'm, then you miss the show. Yeah, yeah. Not, yeah. I'm so ADD, dude, that, like, right. I'm always picking up something. It works. It's fine. It works. Right. Walter, quit I'll, judging the I'll, way I watch I'll, TV, I'll, dude. I'll let everyone enjoy things the way they the want to. The fucking TV lord over here. Lord of yeah, TVs. <laughs> Jesus. I'm so sorry. All right. Turn off your phones, put the kids to bed, put the dog outside. We have to pay full attention to the visual effects. I think that you'll enjoy it more. I'm only trying to make you happy. (laughs) You're ruining my TV experience. Just want everyone. Whenever I'm on my phone, he just glares at me side eyed. (laughs) (laughs) You know, in such a Walter way. Uh Dude, that's so funny. Hell yeah. So tell me about Nexium. I haven't cool. watched this documentary. Uh, it's pretty funny. I mean, like, obviously it's horrific and awful, <laughs> really bad. Um, but like, just like the, the main dude, his name is Keith Ranieri. Um, he was like a MLM, like that's what it's called, right? MLM. Multi-level marketing. Yeah, he did that shit. Uh, what is that? Pyramid scheme. Oh, essentially. hell yeah. Hell yeah. He did that. World's uh, oldest con. Yeah. Everyone found out that's what he was doing. They were like, what a dumbass. And then he was like, I've got a new idea. And it was basically the spiritual growth thing. Uh, well, not even... No, not even at the start, at least from my understanding, executive success programs was more professional development related. Mm, okay. Um, because it was all about what people's dreams and desires were and where they wanted to be. Like a lot of it was, I want to be able to public speak well, or mm-hmm. I want to be in Hollywood doing, you know, being an actress or it was all this like potential. What's your potential? Mm -hmm. um focus and esp was like the initial class that they got people into that then evolved into like more commitment into this bigger thing which is so So this started out as like a business class yes oh it's so it's like what the fuck dude it's like a cult that is literally just like walmart like yeah. either there's all these different branches, like one's called SOP. So there's Nexium, and then underneath Nexium, there's like SOP, which is Society of Protectors, which is like the men's group. Mm-hmm. And then there is uh, ESP, which is the Executive Success, Success Program. Program. So it's like more business focused. And then there's Janess, which is like how to be a good lady. And what the, the fuck? All these sub branches underneath this umbrella of Nexium and then there's like even more fucked up right. cults within those cults. Yeah and so the, it starts off with like this idea like one of the things that was um, one of the things that the vow does because it's it's the people that have been in it for a really long time like in it in it that left and they are working to get people out of it because they were people that put people, took people to it. Oh, shit. So, so it was like the ultimate pyramid scheme. Yeah, I mean, definitely it was like you need to bring people into this. And yeah. the way um, 
I mean, I could not believe the prices on these classes. It, in a lot of ways, was like Scientology. Yeah, where um, it's expensive to get there. Yes. And there's no, like, I don't think they ever talk about, like, a gl- going clear type thing. Yeah. Um, but there is an idea that you can rid yourself of all your fear so that you can meet, like, your full potential. Oh, shit. Um, so that's where it all kind of started as far as this cult like mentality. So a lot of like what I found really um, hit me to my core was when um, these people that made the documentary were like, nobody joins a cult willingly. No. And that made me think it made me really feel for them because they had such good intentions going into this. Like they really just wanted to grow as people and to like build other people up. And it ended up being completely damaging to them and people they brought in. So now this, this uh, show is about them trying to get people out and Jesus. trying to like it for what it is. So that was a really good part of it. There's also another one um, called seduced that came out a little bit after that on a different um, channel. And that's more, they talk to, cult professionals and it's more of one person's story oh, okay this is like the vow is more of like an overarching thing um but and it, the, both of those are about nexium yes oh yeah one of them is about a member within it yeah and then the vow is about just the whole and the vow was filmed you guys were telling me the vow was filmed by a like the right hand dude yeah one of them for sure um he was already like a director or film producer, some, some sort of job in um, more of like a Hollywood scenario. And uh, he got involved early in Nexium. And so he has all of the um, recordings and they also did a lot of things. Like they have a lot of uh, videos, like training videos and all these things. So he has access to all that and you can get it. I'm guessing anywhere, or at least we saw a bunch of it in the, the episodes. And then he also like toward the end of his time there started recording all of his conversations. So you still, you have those two in the the episodes. So Um, did it attract mostly like wealthy Hollywood people or. Yeah. So like different from the typical, like vulnerable cult people, you know, like different from um, your stereotypical scenario with things like that like it was it's similar to Scientology and the fact that they want to go to um, Hollywood and get these people on board so that they can spread this message right and I mean they they went they really wanted to meet the Dalai Lama so that they could be like look he's we're good with him Um, oh shit the people that backed Nexium are the daughters who inherited the Seagram like capital. So they have all this money from all their alcohol. (laughs) Oh shit. Like Seagram seven and sevens and shit. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. Oh shit. They back back it big. I mean, I think they might be in jail now, um, for their role in everything. Um, but they, they actually got it so that Keith, the leader could meet the Dalai Lama. Jesus. So he had, you know, he had all these ways out of like anything. Because he could be like, no, this guy is cool with me. And like, look at who the, it was a status thing, you know? Yeah. Um, they even had like in uh, Mexico, it was like the president's or I forget who it was, but big higher ups in Mexico, mm-hmm. um, following along with what they were doing. But the, to, to talk really quick about the ESP thing, cause that's what they talk about at first is, um, they do these things called EMs. Um, I can't remember what it sounds, stands for now though. Um, where you would, you would talk with somebody else about a traumatic experience. And do you have anything to say? I don't remember the specifics. No. It just seemed like a weird experience and reminded me of that Scientology thing where they kind of like. I forget what that's called too, but they do readings uh-huh. or so, something like that. And they're um, trying to figure out like. They work through some trauma. Okay. And then they are like freed from it. So they, they work a lot on controlling your 
um, internal responses to things. So that's a, a big red flag is that they're trying to tell you, don't listen to your gut and don't listen to your fear. Oh, yeah. You can only push yourself past something if it is uncomfortable. Okay. So that's a huge component of like, you're only growing, you're only developing if you are uncomfortable. Yeah. That plays into a lot about the cult, like, behavior and how it uh, like affirms that I don't know in no. how they operate and then people aren't, are always second guessing themselves Jesus and it's like but it starts as like this kind of like business training shit right. yeah and then they and work it, you through it sounds like what was that fucking book that everybody liked at one point well a, a bunch of assholes no it was uh how to influence people and make friends or whatever yeah. dude it all sounds like that shit like <laughs> like self-help yeah well and and i think the thing that's like really wild about this is like at the end of it what is like unexpected is not just that it's like outed as a cult and a scam there are sex trafficking. What? Yeah. yeah. There are Jesus. sex trafficking cases levied against these people. Like, it's not just like, you know, they robbed, they scammed some rich right. people out of their money and time and, you know, fucking got people to believe some bullshit. Like, they did real material fucking harm. Damage. To God damn. Uh, so, all right. So it starts, this dude starts it, right? Mm -hmm. And it starts out as this like business shit, like trying to train people for whatever. That's the ESP shit. And then it, oh. and then it morphs into like a cult church. Yes. So he has this woman working with him from the beginning named Nancy. And I can't remember exactly what her job was before that and what she went to school for, mm -hmm. but it was some sort of like meditative linguistics or something yeah. like something where she can influence like how you feel based off how she talks, like how the inflections on her words, the Damn, rhythm. Damn, that sounds like a fucking superpower. It is. It totally is. So that's what she did before doing any of this. So I think that that plays into a lot of what they're going for, which is like a total emotional connection with these people. They were and literally trying to influence them and I, fucking, oh my God, hypnotize. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so that was a huge component of it. And then um, I don't know. I can't remember where else I was going to go with that, but I felt like that was something I needed to say. <laughs> yeah well and then what's it move into like does this dude create an afterlife for people like is there i don't think he does i think it's all in the service of just like self-betterment for the most part yeah. um he just has people really convinced like uh that they think too highly of themselves he, these people convinced that yeah, it's it's a lot of, I mean, like, I think a lot of the time it's like lower people's self-esteem, so they'll do what whatever you want them to do. This guy seems like he had, like, a sociopathic kind of, like, he just, like, got off on control mm -hmm. and, like, power. Yeah. And he formulated a way to get into a position where he could just do that to levels that were, like, absurd, like he would call up um this woman uh like the main his like right hand man's wife and they'd go on walks together uh in the middle of the night and just like talk about things and he'd just like challenge her like he'd be like lick that puddle what like you're too afraid of germs you let your fear of germs control you go lick that puddle like shit like that where it's just like you're obviously like just getting off yeah. on your power trip. Didn't Jesus. she say, even in that example, she talked about how he told her she was too self-protective and told her to run straight into a tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she like, by she did, she tried it and she bypassed the tree and he was like, see? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> motherfucker. Like, 
<laughs> Nobody wants to run face first into a tree. Mm-hmm. What a piece yeah. of shit. Uh, he's like straight up just like a fucking sociopath that yeah. like finagled him his his way into like a the funniest thing is he has everyone call him Vanguard. Yeah. Which is such a goofy ass <laughs> title think, to give yourself. But don't you think that's what's so good about the podcast? So the first episode starts with this woman, Sarah, and she's talking about how all this stuff is so weird, but she's literally one that gets sucked in so deep. She's in it for like 10 years and brings so many people to it. Yeah. So it's really interesting to hear her talk on the podcast because she also... Or the up, documentary. Or sorry, yeah, the documentary. And she also ends up, there is a podcast about it. I just don't know what it is. Uh, um, she also kind of talks about having to like break that down afterwards too, you know, yeah. like how did you let that get to me like that? But it is interesting to hear her talk about her first experiences and how they, what do they do? Like they don't bow, but they do. I, I forget. They have they like curtsy or some they shit. Do something um, as a hello, they wear sashes she yeah, was like totally so weirded out by like some of these things, but she was like, I'll just do it because it seems like, like she did feel better yeah, emotionally after something happened. Yeah. I don't know, but dude, sometimes I feel like all you have to do is speak really loudly and confidently and people will leave it and be like, man, I feel way better about myself. Oh, and that's the thing that they like it doesn't go ahead. It doesn't. Well, yeah, I'm just saying it's like, you can leave something and have this feeling like you just start like accepting shit because it made you feel a certain type of way. Right. Even if that way was terrible, but you think like, oh, maybe that's good that I felt that. Mm-hmm. And then you start just accepting the weirdness. There's this other part of it too with this one specifically, but I think once we talk about this, it would be cool to go back and be like, when Mark says like no one joins a call on purpose. Mark the documentarian yeah. that made it. I think it would be cool to talk like to kind of dissect that a little bit more, you know, and talk about like how that stuff does happen. But or maybe we just will. Um, but the thing about Keith specifically was that he was kind of this untouchable, they made him this untouchable guy that was like at least in ESP, he's like this secret, like they they don't ever really meet him. It was like a big deal to even be around him. They just talked about him a bunch and how yeah. smart he was and how his IQ was so high. And he created this so that everybody could blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. And then you get to a certain point and it's like, well, oh, Keith plays volleyball on Sundays and everybody's literally like around him sitting there hanging on to every word that he says. And Jesus. So there ends up being this woman that is an actress. Um, her name's Allison Mack. She was on Smallville. Oh, and shit. She played a huge role in the trafficking stuff. What? So she becomes his, like, right-hand lady. Um, Wait, the girl from Smallville? Yeah. Yeah. She's in jail right now. What was she? Who was she in Smallville? She's the blonde girl that oh, was like, oh yeah, the bubbly friend. God, that's crazy. Yeah, and then there's different like um, different actors and stuff that were in it. One of the women that's um, interviewed in the Vow, the um, follow up, the Seduced, is about her daughter India, and she was um, in. And went through the executive success program, the ESP thing, and then got out of it. She felt weird about it, but her daughter ended up staying for a very long time. So she's in the vow and she's like, um, she's a descendant of a queen in another country. I think it might even be the, like the queen, the UK, um, yeah. or something related. Um, <laughs> and then she's also like starting the love boat. So they like were really wanting her to be a part of things Jesus. because of her and stuff. God and damn, her, her daughter ended up being in it till the end. So sm- so Smallville girl starts fucking human trafficking, right? And so this woman actually, her daughter is one that's with her, lives with her until the end of it. Um, I don't. Yeah, it goes real weird, real quick it seems like but yeah, i'm sure uh it was different you know being a part of it um, yeah. 
it turns out that women were being invited to a secret society of women that they couldn't talk about outside of um, this group. And they would have, they were basically told like, this will help you get to where you want to be. This is so secret and so private and so cool and whatever, you yeah. know, just all of that stuff that makes something seem so appealing. And the, and then Allison Mack is like, but I need some collateral. Like I need something. I need you to give me something so that I know you're all in. So they were blackmailing these women. So they would send them, they would send her either like nude pics or <coughs> give her, even if it was made up because they wanted stuff all the time from these, these women. Yeah. They would make up stories like my husband beats me. Or some like some something that they oh, could shit. Have to hold against them if they ever needed it, because this is a lifelong commitment. It's also one where you are the slave and the person who like com- like admits you is your master. Like for real, that's the terms they use. Those are the terms and they would justify it. And they and people talk about how they felt uneasy with it, but they would justify it. In some well, way, it's supposed, again, it's supposed to feel uncomfortable. Yeah, um, that's uncomfortable. Monitor, they had to. <laughs> yeah, it is. They had to send pictures, of calorie counts of their food intake to their master, and um, and they were all losing. Like, I mean, they were losing hair. They were losing so much weight and oh not eating. God. Um, and they, these were the women that they were trafficking. Yeah, so they were um, mainly being used at cer- at a certain point. It got to a point where Keith was with all of these women and oh, like shit. Uh, in some capacity. Um, but it was all very secret still. Like none of them knew that they had a grand master. That's who he is. Yeah. Grand master. Oh That's my what God. His- um, Vanguard. But it was like- it was like, and when they were first told about it, they were like, this is a women's group created by women for women. Like it was very like, mm-hmm. so it was just such a lie um, because Keith had created all their, and seduced, they actually have a video of him talking about it. And when I heard that, I was like, I can't, I can't believe this because what happens is these women end up getting branded. They literally have a, um, a pin that burns flesh off their body Jesus. That them for life um, to be a part of this thing and to hear him talk about that was so disgusting it was so disgusting because he made it his initials but then lied about what it was because oh, he was even, you know he wasn't technically a part of it at that point like he has these people convinced that they're doing what they should be and what's good for them <laughs> So it was a mess. I forget. I was going to say something else about the stuff before the blackmailing thing. And then, um, I don't know. It's all a fucking nightmare. It really is. A fucking nightmare. They do these things called readiness challenges and they did it and they did it in the, um, society of protectors too, where, um, whoever was above you would write like text you like ready. And if you didn't respond within, I think it's like 30 seconds then you were reprimanded somehow. Oh my God. And, and that ended up in the cases of the ladies in that um, sex cult group was like whipping and like bondage uh. stuff. It was just super, super crazy, but it was another way to keep people on their toes and like always, you know, um, respond to you. And I don't know. Jesus. So it was like, he was, fucking grabbing money and fucking ruining people's lives. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Um, he was making people pay him so that he could fucking destroy them. Yeah, absolutely. God damn you remember, What was the one that was the class like with Gen S and SOP where they combined the... Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, That yeah, was yeah. so crazy. I mean, it's it's really worth watching and just the way that like... I don't know. Maybe there's a temptation to like view the people who got sucked up in it like uh, negatively, but like 
just on a human level to see these people that are not really, I mean, they're no different than us, right? Oh, like, fuck now. Just some, for whatever reason, whatever path they took led them into this situation and to see like the shit that these people went through and like the messages that were used to confuse them. It's like, it's really intriguing. And I think that it really just makes you think like you really have to every day of your life, look at what's around you and evaluate if it's good or not. Yeah. Yeah. Even if it's something you've been doing for fucking years. Yeah. Even if it's the thing that you think is central to your being, really look at it. Because, like, all those people, they fucking thought, this is it. I figured it out, right? Like, Mm -hmm. there was that one person who had escaped a cult already in their life and then ended up right back in one. Jesus. We're not immune from this shit. No, fuck no. I mean, I think everybody that we've had on the podcast talk about like them losing their faith or pivoting their faith and things like that. All of them have said things like, yeah, I should have kind of trusted my gut or reevaluate or things like that. You know what I mean? Like always be thinking about that shit and where you are with it. Mm -hmm. Because like it is, I mean, dude, like. I think these things come out first and they're like, you're awesome and you can be great and you just need these things. And people are like, I am awesome. And I I do need a few things. And then it turns into your whole fucking life. Yeah. Well, and there were people that had left or tried to leave, you know, like there are people that wanted to be like, quote unquote, whistleblowers, but like Keith had it. I mean, he had so much money and was able to sue anybody for anything. And then, you know, if it was these women, they had collateral. They had stuff to, like, control them. So, oftentimes, there would be stories out about him and his abuse of power, but he had so much... um, He had so much control over people that he could persuade them so easily to be like, they're just jealous. Or that's just, you know, have some excuse for why they shouldn't trust what was written about him. Yeah, dude. That's fucking awful. But, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, I think there's truth to, like, yeah, examine everything. But some of these people had mental breakdowns, like, hospitalized. Yeah. Because of the stuff that was done to their brain. like. Yeah. They couldn't even think for themselves, you know, yeah. it's crazy to think that they got to that point, but, um, it happened. Yeah. So. Yeah. Damn dude. Yeah. I mean, like you guys said, uh, like, I don't think anybody's above it. Like Teak said, like, what's that dude say? Like nobody willingly joins a cult. Yeah. You know, like yeah, he joins a cult on purpose, I think is mm-hmm. yeah. like, it's like you don't, you, you never just like, oh yeah, that's a cult. Yeah. Sounds good. Sounds rad. Yeah, I'm I'm down. Yeah. It's like, no, you think you're just fucking doing something that's helping people or that's going to make you a better person. Right. And then somewhere along the line, you're like, oh, this that's not what this is doing. Yeah. Or you just fucking keep doing it forever, I guess. I don't know. Until you drink the Kool-Aid. Right. Well, and it was in that situation, it was Mark's wife that was like, I can't be a part of this anymore. I'm watching these women like deteriorate. They're Mm -hmm. not eating. They, everyone's so sleep deprived. They're losing hair. Like Mm -hmm. something's really wrong. So she ended up leaving before he did. Mm -hmm. And then he was like, I'm going to start questioning things. And then you have all these recordings. You know what I think is so interesting about this cult specifically is that it's like not tied to any particular spiritual belief. Right. Yeah. That's why, like, I was kind of confused. I was like, this dude didn't even invent heaven. You know what I mean? He didn't say like, he didn't say like, 
there's a mean, powerful God looking down at you and you should be ashamed. Like it was really just like the most corporate, like here's how to be more successful type shit. Dude. Like, uh, which is scary that that's enough to motivate people to do what they did. But I mean, obviously like be cautious. Like if you're, if you are a spiritual person, it's great to be spiritual and to be in touch with that part of yourself and to explore that. But when a, I feel like it's a really exploitable uh, position. Yeah. And, just like be critical of that, be critical of all these systems that you subject yourself to Mm -hmm. on a daily basis. I'm not saying they're wrong. They might be great. Just think about it and fucking really watch the vow. Think about those people. (laughs) Yeah. Fucking a like those people are like us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They just like, they went down a different path and think about like learn from their uh lives yeah they live through that and hopefully because of that you don't have to take that well, gift from for them. sure yeah i i think too like you know in this time i feel like every time you get on any type of social media it's like here's how you can be successful this is mm-hmm. what you need to do we've broke the code do this you know what i mean like it's like even with like not having a spiritual background, you're gonna you can buy into it fucking anything, dude. Oh, like yeah. it's one of the reasons I've told people like Jordan Peterson's dangerous. You know what I mean? Like this dude's like telling you how to be a man and what it is to be a, a fucking, you know? And it's like you're buying into some scary fucking shit that will change you as a person. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, be skeptical of anyone who tells you, you know, they are in full support of all of your personal freedoms, but at the same time says there is a pretty strict and rigid way to live your best life. Uh Yeah. When, When their whole platform is like, everyone should be as free as possible, but maybe men shouldn't wear dresses. Yeah. I don't know. That that doesn't seem like somebody who thinks that freedom is the utmost important yeah. person. Or even yeah, and I think too, like people if people are telling you that you are you are fucked up. You are fucked up and the only way that you can have change is by doing this. You yeah. know, like that fucking that shit scares me. <laughs> like I think that you are a good person, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So. Yeah. There's Fuck. a lot of scammers out there and there's a lot of ways for them to scam now. Like yeah. there's so many different methods. Yeah. Having social media and having different forms of communication. Like yeah. it's not just like somebody uh trying to like buy your house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's it's- right. It's, it's not just uh it's not just a Saudi prince email anymore. Yeah. yeah. It's like, I really have some rubies tied up. If you could just give me some money, I will send you rubies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, dude. There's yeah. There's a lot of different ways. There's work. Yeah, I mean, we started this podcast like one of our first episodes was definitely not a cult. And we talked through a lot of the cult stuff and shit and how it like plays out in people's lives and um, I don't know. Like, I think that there is a fine line between religion and cult. So like Walter was saying, like, be, be critical. I think that's a good point. Yep. Yeah, I do too. That shit's so scary. God damn. The fucking like depravity of people. Is, yeah, I that's- think that's a hard topic for me because I'm, I like have worked really hard on giving people the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, because I've always been really uh, protect, like self protective, and like really cynical. Yeah. So I've worked really hard on giving people the benefit of the doubt, and I'm not good at reading like what's not right in front of me. Mm. So this type of situation with somebody who's super manipulative like this, 
um, I was like, I could really see myself getting like swept up in something like this because I'm trying so hard to like see the best in people. And I'm also not great at not at seeing what's not there. Um, so I think that stuff's really scary, but there's definitely like gut reactions that you get in situations yeah. that I think you do need to follow. Or like when you're in a place and you have to justify and make something okay, you know, like that's another time to like giving yourself think. cognitive dissidents. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dude. Well, fuck. Happy Thanksgiving guys. <laughs> happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> Don't join a call. Don't join a call. Cracker Barrel does have the, um, like the cheesy potatoes though. They have oh the fuck, dude! <laughs> Cracker Barrel has a game where you have a triangle and you have to put the there's tees like golf yeah, tees. Yeah, dude. Get them all off there. Yeah, that one's tough. Well, it's to keep all of their like clientele like sharp. You know, you gotta do those brain I, games I, when you hit eighty. I don't think I've ever beat it. So if eighty year olds are beating that shit, then maybe it's just should- keeping their mind sharp, dude. That's all it is. It's just working. It's like, hey, here at Cracker Barrel, soft on the pandemic. We're really hard on your IBS. Hard on the senior mind. Yeah, hard on the senior minds. That's those are the <laughs> things we take care of. Is the IBS and the fucking you know ulcers. Take care of the ulcers here. Absolutely. <laughs> First for this week, uh Nobody joins a cult on purpose. Yeah, for sure. And remember that we're not a cult. We are. This is not a cult also. <laughs> so you can do this on purpose. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Join us on purpose, you. please. Yeah, we're not gonna <laughs> we're not gonna tell you what to do. No, fuck no. But I'll, do join I'll us. A couple suggestions on like you know, uh Oh my Oh my, yeah. My, my executive I've program made, of I've success. I've made some stuff. suggestions before, I'm sure, about how to be. I mean, don't join a cult as a suggestion. Yeah, so. fuck yeah. <laughs> That's the type of shit we're about. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we're real about suggesting people to love people and hate the cops. Yeah. That's one. Mm-hmm. So if you're not cool with that, though, you can go somewhere else. We're not going to beat you into submission. Hell no, dude. No. Fuck no. Absolutely not. So this was a quick one. Happy Thanksgiving. It was sad. Be thankful for things. Yeah. Don't Um, give your mom COVID. I hope you didn't. Also, like, think about the indigenous people. Fuck, like, all this Christopher Columbus Thanksgiving bullshit. Oh, yeah, for sure. So. Stolen land. (laughs) Cool country alert. Absolutely. All uh, right. You can follow yeah. us everywhere. Uh, Toma Chaos Podcast at gmail.com. Send us questions, concerns, critiques. Five star mm-hmm. rating on iTunes. Mm-hmm. You have to do it. Steal your friend's phone and put a five star rating in. That would be so sick if you did that. Everyone would be like, oh my God, they're so wild and crazy. <laughs> Dude, just <laughs> take your. Take your friend's phone and just be like, man, I really got to rate this podcast on your iTunes app. Did you see when Benny took Bethy's phone? <laughs> Impressive. And he wrote that review of Tom of Chaos. I think I want to date him. <laughs> they are so Gen Z and chaotic. <laughs> Such a chaotic Gen Z moment. Oh, my God. Gotta put this on TikTok. High so five. cute. So cute. Let's put it on t- TikTok and play that song by uh, fucking Fleetwood Mac. Oh, yeah. The hell are you talking about? That was real big for a little while on the TikTok averse, dude. Dios mio. <laughs> We're all about 24K golden over here. <laughs> I'm not about that. I don't know what that is. That's what me and all the TikTokers are about. And some BTS. A little bit of BTS. A little bit little of BTS. Baby. Hey, we're just trying to K-pop stands over here. 
and have a great Thanksgiving. Night. Yeah. The end. I hope this uh I hope this <laughs> podcast episode turns into like the Charlie Brown Thanksgiving shit. People just oh, yeah. have to listen to it every year. <laughs> every year, <they're> like, <laughs> every year they're like cult again. <laughs> yeah, let's <laughs> look, look. You know my traditions. I gotta watch the Macy Day. Uh, I gotta watch the Macy Day Parade, and then I gotta listen to that Tome episode. Mm-hmm. For sure. Hey, Before we love you all, and uh, we hope chaos walks with you. Don't join cults. Peace. No. Peace. Mmm.